uh, hello traders welcome back to another new youtube video so in this episode i'm going to be teaching you a very simple demand and supply strategy so if you're a beginner or you have, you have been uh, a trader and you have not been knowing how uh, demand and supply works in the forex market this is the video for you guys i'm going to be teaching you how we can find demand and supply zones in the market and how do we take profits and how do we set, set our stop losses so without further ado make sure to subscribe and let's get started with this video So, for us to understand demand and supply, we are going to be looking at Euro card. We are going to be looking at Euro card currency pair. So, to understand how the demand and supply works, we need to first get some facts about Forex. So, as you can see, we have a liquidity of uh, we have a liquidity of 6.6 .6 trillion dollars that is being traded every day in the Forex market. As you can see here, we have a liquidity of 6.6 .6 trillion dollars of uh, in money that is being traded every day but who trades in that money uh we have the central banks the commercial banks and then brokers uh very big banks i mean very big companies corporate companies and also us retail traders so to understand uh, the, uh demand and supply we need to know who who trade the biggest percentage in the forex market so the banks or the central banks the central banks are the ones that trade the biggest uh, they trade the biggest percentage in the first market as you can see even down here the major players in the market are the commercial banks central banks money managers and hedge funds plus us the retail traders so but again you should remember the the banks trade uh, uh they move uh 85 percent of this money in the market so meaning the banks control the, the forex money the most so us we can't control the money so meaning we can only control our risk management and also we can just know how the market how the banks how the banks trade so in this strategy today i'm going to be teaching you how the banks trade and how we can find the those setups so guys let's get started as you can see this is uh this is a uh, euro card yeah this is a very good pair for me to trade so i'm going to be teaching you demand and supply on the sideways market the sideways market is a market that is you know going up like this you see so this is like the best way to trade demand and supply. So first of all, we're going to do a top-down analysis. We're going to do a top-down analysis. As you can see, I've come to the the daily time frame. So what do we have on a daily time frame? I've been monitoring this market for quite a bit. I've been monitoring this market now for quite some time. As you can see, we had here a, a very short tango. As you can see, I'm going to mark it out here. This is a very short tango right here. As you can see i'm marking it out this is a bearish short term as you can see some of you can call this a ranging market but this is a, a bearish short term which indicates uh indicates a continuation to the downside as you can see and if even if i draw here the rectangle properly you would see what i mean something like this so this is the zone i'm talking about this is the zone i'm talking about guys as you can see so we have market we had market come bounce off these levels uh, we had market bounce off these levels very many times as you can see you had there one one uh two then three then also here again here so when you want to know how the banks trade uh the banks trade in, uh, uh, in in very many ways, in uptrends and downtrends. But now, since this is a sideways market, whenever you see V-shaped V-shaped structures in the market, whenever you see, you know, price doing this V-shaped, like these perfect Vs, you see this V, like you see this one. Let me show you. You see this V. These are banks that you know put in liquidity and drive the market wherever they want. They can either be like this. You see. Or like this you see these v-shapes this is what I'm, i've marked out you see so it's only the banks that uh trade like that because we retail traders can never make these perfect movements you can never you know bring the market up like this then bring it down like this this can never happen we can never do this it's only the banks you know they put in money so so to, to trade this type of market whenever you see a sideways market like you see let's say if market has formed uh, let me first remove off this 
And if I should move off all this, then I'll show you something. So whenever uh, a market is, you know, in a ranging market, what you call a ranging market. So let's say, uh huh. So whenever you see price, you know, coming like this, you see, it comes there to this level here. Then again, it comes to this level here. What you want to do is mark the the highest point here and mark the lowest point here where market has ranged. Mark those two points. The reason why we mark those points because market is going to market is going to come whenever we mark we mark here. You see here and then here. So the reason why we do that market when market comes back here, it's going to want to either try to go up or it will just go back down in this zone as you can see. That's what market is going to do. Market will either go the other side, it will either go up or it will want to break this. You see this resistance line. This is a resistance line now. This one is a resistance line. This one. So price is going to try and break that, or it will just keep come back down to this support level. So this is support level. As you know, it's a resi resistance means a, a zone at which sellers come in, and then support means a, a zone where buyers come in, as you can see here. So what do we have here? So when I see this V-shaped structure, I know these are the banks, and I know banks are going to drive in money at two back here until again they will turn the market to come back to this zone. Whenever I see these V-shapes, I know okay, these are just the banks doing this. You get so when the banks drive the market from here to here, then me I'm just going to be trading in between. As you know, as you know about um, a sideways market, we we trade in both ways. We trade in both ways. We trade. We sell here, buy here, sell here, buy here. But again, we are only looking for V-shaped structures. As you can see, since this is a daily time frame. So this is how you can see it. But I'm going to go to the uh, the small time frame so I can show you. These are like really big trends. Huh? Since this is a daily time frame. So meaning each candle here represents day. So meaning on a smaller time frame, this is a this is a, a trend this is a trend it's not just like a, it's not just a sideways market so let's switch on to the uh the four hour time frame mm -hmm. so this is the four hour time frame guys as you can see so you see what we have this is a trend you see you see we have an uptrend down trend you see you see what we have guys this is what we call demand and supply so aha uh -huh. so here we would execute in a sell trend and then here would execute a buy trend but here when you're executing your sell trade here you want to put your stop loss just above you know just above like 20 pips 30 pips above here like this so that when market reverses on you you don't lose any money so i'll show you here so if you have to take this trend your entry would be just here like this then my stop loss would be My stop loss would be just, you know, just 20 pips, 30 pips, just there like this, see, 30 pips, then my target would be here. But again, since, let's say we didn't find that trend, we wait when market comes back to a certain zone like this one, a certain zone like this one, you see. So here we again, we do it, we sell, here we sell, so here we sell. At this level here here we sell and here down we buy here we buy the reason for that we are selling at this supply zone and we are buying at this demand zone the demand zone is where buyers are you know buyer, this is where buyers are coming in or this is the same zone where banks will you know put in more liquidity and drive the market back up again so that's also the zone where buyers will come in but again also some people will enter these trades knowing okay prices let's say up here people will think price is going to break and you know retest and then go up then they they, they miss out and then they go they get caught up in buy trades that market is going to sell you get guys so this is a very very simple strategy we are only buying and selling but we all just we just need to be patient with this market okay? wait for the you see this v-shaped you see this v-shaped you know so when i see something like that i see those multiple rejections what i do I just take the trade guys as long as my stop loss has to be very tight my stop loss has to be very tight let me show you 
Ja. Das ist immer mit Level Row. As you can see, this is a market that has been. I've been monitoring this market. I've taken trades. I've sent trades in the VIP, showing people how this demand and supply thing works, guys. Remember, the banks trade the biggest liquidity, like they trade the biggest percentage of money in the forex market. So, meaning they have control of the money, the most money in the banks. I mean, in the market, as you can see. You see this V shape. You know the banks are coming in. You see this V shape. Until we, we trade, until we see a breakout. We trade until we see breakout. Now a breakout happened yesterday. You see, and the reason why right now the euro is doing very bad. The euro is really down right now. You can see. So even knowing that the euro is really down right now, it's all fundamental analysis. That's why we need to know fundamental analysis, taking analysis. We need to know all of these things. As you can see, we had the breakout here. You see, the breakout happened with a very big red candle. So let me show you something. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. As you can see, when I zoom in very well, you see this red candle. This red candle right here. This red candle. That was the breakout. So when a big red candle breaks out from our zone, which means it has broken the support level. So this is the support level right here. This is the support level right there. So meaning, if they break it, it becomes resistance. Now price tries to come back in to see if it can go back in. But again, as you see. Price fell, meaning that was just a retest, and what we had was just a retest like this. Then price is now coming back down, as you can see. So we, whenever we are trading such types of markets, we are, we are only waiting. We are going to buy and sell in between levels, because we know, we know up here, this is a supply zone and this is a demand zone right here. Then again, as we are waiting for the breakout, you see, the breakout happens there. But again, we don't take trades on. Uh, Bigger time frames, you go up to the 15 years time frame to take our trade. But again, this is demand and supply, guys. As you can see, this is a demand and supply zone. But again, here on the bigger time frame, this is a bearish rectangle. A bearish rectangle is a uh, is a, co a, a continuational pattern to the downside. And also, we we need to we need to have like so many aspects that we best want to take these trades. We need to have so many aspects. But again, I was very sure about this trade that it had to break out anytime. But again. Also, we want to take trades in between these levels. So let me first mark out some of the levels of how we would take trades here. So here, this would be a buy again. Let's say if your target, since uh, this is a, this is a supply and demand zones here. Our targets can be 50 pips, uh, 50 pips, something like that. As you can see, if you take trade up to down here, that's already a thousand pips. Then again, you take another trade up here to the uh, a long position. As you can see, a long position to the upper side, a long position comes up to here. As you can see, that's why they also are thousand pips. Then our stop loss is uh, our stop loss is uh, let's see, it's um, it has to be 20 pips, you know, yeah. Let's put it here, we don't want to, you know, confuse you guys. So, here we are buying. Here we are. I mean, here we are selling. Here we are buying, as you can see. So this would be like a very. This would be like very good setups. Let me mark them. Let me just mark them out for you guys. Let me just mark them out for you, so that you can see these these beautiful setups. So that you can see these beautiful setups. Also, move all this on my screen. Guys, as we are doing this, we need to have. You know the right for psychology these trades are very easy to take but again with the wrong psychology you can freak out thinking market will go the other way around you know so guys i'm going to mark these zones again so here we would sell then here we would buy as long as we see our v-shaped structures then again here we would buy then here we would sell as you see i've written it there same to here here we sell here we buy see but again we do this uh taking a notice of all oh, whatever is happening right now in the in the country as you can see this is euro card i will show you even another currency pair i will show you all your pairs they are really going down uh, let's say let's say euro euro usd so uh, this, i'm going to show you USD. right now it's also in a downtrend as you can see it's also in a downtrend as you see it's in a downtrend See, it broke structure, 
we broke this structure here. You see? So this is a cup. Market had formed a cup. This is a cup, a cup and handle. You see, this is a cup. You see? Cup and handle. These are patterns that I keep on teaching you guys. And if you haven't watched the video about uh, forex patterns, go check it out right now. So that you don't you are able to trade all this, you see. Now we have the breakout, the market has to drop down. You know right now the euro is really doing bad. So guys, that's the demand and supply zone. Just know the demand and supply zone, we just want to know uh the demand and supply zone, we just want to know uh when uh when a bank should be taking uh, the market so when are they adding in more liquidity, you know, to drive wherever they want, you know. Those are things that we take notice of. But again, as we are doing that, we need to be patient with the market case. We need to be patient with the market. We don't want to, you know. You should trade that knowing that the people that have the biggest say in the market are the banks. So banks just add in liquidity. Some of other demand zones and supply zones, I'll show you some of them others here. I'll show you some of the other demand and supply zones. As you can see, this is a downtrend. This is a nice downtrend. So right here is a supply zone. So supply zone, you see. Banks drive the market down. Again, they drive the market back up here. You see. So this is a demand zone here. Then here the supply zone right here. So I will also be teaching you all these other forms of supply and demand. But again, this is the simplest one that any beginner trader can trade. Most of you guys just trade this as the as a ranging market that we're buying and selling. But again, knowing that this is how the banks you know drive, you know, knowing those V-shaped structures. It's a very important thing guys. So if you have enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video where I'm going to be teaching you more simple strategies guys. See you in my next video.